Welcome back, my perfect listeners. And welcome back to some of my favorite haters. I appreciate everyone. Hope you will like this story, cause it has so cold revenge that I haven't read before. Let's start, and thanks to Cindy TV for this story. I found out in the most unusual way. It happened at the start of our annual men's fishing weekend. The guys, Scott, Stan, Roger, and myself, go up to the lake for our three-day fishing trip, while our wives make it a girl's weekend. We've known each other for many years, and Roger and Mary were our closest friends. Stan Fortunato was Roger's nephew and several years younger than us, but we welcomed him into our circle of friends. Over time, he became one of my best employees. When Laura and I got married, we were just high school graduates, but I was determined and hardworking. Shortly after graduating, I started a small pool service business, and within two years, it had grown to serve over 100 homes, with the help of four employees. The business continued to thrive, and 20 years later, I was managing over 1,500 homes with a team of 30 dedicated employees, including the invaluable Stan, who proved to be a remarkable asset to the company. Despite lacking a college education or prior experience, Stan's passion, strong work ethic, and fantastic rapport with the team made him an exceptional manager for our Orlando operations. Recognizing his outstanding contributions, I promoted him, offering a substantial increase in pay and the possibility of future ownership in the company. Our professional relationship flourished into a genuine friendship, and we enjoyed working together. Over the years, I expanded the business from Tampa to Orlando, establishing it as the premier pool service company in Central Florida. With the vast majority of homes having pools that required constant care and maintenance, our services were in high demand. Our revenue and profit soared, strengthening the company's position in the market. As the business grew, the importance of financial management became evident. I relied on Howard, a trusted and experienced family member who was a retired tax accountant with a wealth of knowledge in finance. Under his advice, I leveraged all the equity in my home to expand the business when mortgage rates were extremely low. My trust in Howard was a testament to his expertise and dedication. He, along with his attorney spouse, played a significant role in our success, providing invaluable advice and recommendations that proved to be instrumental in the company's prosperity. Howard's wife, Beth, was a corporate attorney and suggested placing the company into a trust to protect the assets from liabilities and any potential lawsuits in the future. I followed her advice and became the sole trustee. Ah, the joys of married life and the pursuit of a dream home. My wife, Laura, and her crew of girlfriends simply adored our new estate home. Picture this. A posh upscale neighborhood with a massive swimming pool, an oversized patio that boasts a charming tiki bar, and a grilling area that would make any BBQ enthusiast drool. Oh, and let's not forget about all the luxurious amenities that Laura had insisted on having she had got a knack for getting what she wanted, and I could never say no to her persuasive charm. You see, these homes in our fancy neighborhood were appreciating faster than a shooting star. So, naturally, I gave in to Laura's every upgrade whim, knowing full well that when the time came to sell, we'd be rolling in dough. Love has a funny way of making us do things we never thought we would, but hey, it was all for the greater good, right? Well, today's the day. Laura and her crew of gal pals have descended upon our fancy boat for a weekend of pure indulgence. As they arrived, I received strict instructions not to disrupt their shenanigans, they were on a mission to have a blast without us husbands around. And boy, did I happily oblige. I was more than ready to escape the clutches of girl talk and gossip for the weekend. With fishing rods in hand and a heart full of freedom, I dashed out of there faster than a pack of excited puppies. A fishing trip sounded like paradise after slaving away for weeks running my growing company. The thought of reeling in some big catches and sipping a cold one with the boys was pure heaven. As I left the ladies to their wine-fueled afternoon of giggles and secrets, I couldn't help but think how lucky I was to have Laura and her gang of mischief-makers in my life. Sure, they might drive us husbands crazy at times, but deep down, we knew they were the spice that added flavor to our otherwise ordinary days. I couldn't help but smile as I drove over to Roger's house, knowing that the weekend's adventures were just beginning. We had meticulously planned our trip to the lake, aiming to depart at 6 p.m. to reach our destination by 9 p.m. The three-day excursion promised to be an exciting time, filled with fishing and camaraderie. As we gathered our gear and packed up the car, I suddenly realized that I had forgotten my special fishing lure, which I had been diligently working on in my workshop. For me, fishing was not just a hobby, it was a passion. 
I took great pride in crafting my fishing lures and tackle combinations, believing that the right equipment could make all the difference in a successful catch. This particular lure I had been working on for the past week held a special significance to me it was a labor of love, a custom creation tailored to attract the biggest fish and bring me joy on the water. Knowing the impact of having the perfect lure, I couldn't fathom going on the trip without it. So, I informed my fellow fishing buddies that I needed to retrieve my prize lure before we embarked on our adventure. They chuckled good naturally, understanding my dedication to the sport. I jumped in my car at 5 p.m. and drove the 7 minutes back to my house, parked behind all the women's cars and walked to the side door, and quietly made my way down to the workshop, not wanting to disturb the girls or get yelled at for coming home early. Trying to remain quiet I made my way over to the bench and noticed that I could hear the woman chatting. I remember laughing when I realized they were already drunk as they were giggling and having fun. They were sitting in the shade next to the tiki hut, which was at the side of my house. The workbench was just below the outside window and was close enough to hear their conversation. Now, I am not an eavesdropper and couldn't give a crap about their conversion, but when I heard my wife talking about me in bed, my attention perked up. I don't know why, but I thought that I should record this part of the conversation and tease her with it when I got back, so I turned on the recording application on my iPhone. The next few minutes ruined my fishing trip and turned my world upside down. Apparently, I just walked into the middle of a steamy gossip session. The ladies were certainly not holding back, and I couldn't help but chuckle at their candidness. It seemed like they were discussing the not-so-private details of their love lives, and things were getting spicy. Laura, with her mischievous laugh, didn't shy away from dishing out the details about a relationship with her husband, me. I heard her tell the girls how great I was with my tongue, and that I never failed to bring her off and satisfy her after all these years. I couldn't help but think, you go Lore. Brag about your stud hobby. She continued, but it's true what they say. After years of marriage, things might not be as wild as they once were. But hey, it happens to the best of us. But then, out of nowhere, one of the girls dropped the million dollar question. Is that why you did it with Stan? My ears perked up as I leaned in, curious to see how Laura would respond to that bombshell. The girls were in full detective mode, trying to piece together the puzzle of Laura's recent escapades. If Laura's candidness was anything to go by, I had a feeling this conversation was about to take an interesting turn. I could feel the suspense, and a dash of intrigue hung in the air as the girls waited for Laura's response. Fuck. My heart skipped a beat, and I couldn't believe what I had just heard. Did I hear it right? Did Laura just say she did something with Stan, or Stan? Panic and disbelief washed over me like a tidal wave, and I leaned further in, desperate to catch every single word. My mind raced, trying to process this shocking revelation. Stan, who I trusted and considered a friend, had been involved in something with my wife. It felt like the ground beneath me was crumbling, and I struggled to keep my emotions in check. Every word they uttered felt like a dagger to my heart. The giggles and laughter that once brought joy now sounded like a cruel symphony of betrayal. My hands trembled as I clutched the phone, my heart pounding in my chest, and tears threatening to spill from my eyes. As I continued to eavesdrop on this gut-wrenching conversation, I felt like a helpless bystander in my own life. The shock and hurt were almost too much to bear, and I desperately wished I could rewind time and erase those words from existence. At that moment, the truth hit me like a ton of bricks, the trust I had placed in both Laura and Stan, had been shattered into a million pieces. I felt lost, betrayed, and utterly broken. The pain was unbearable, and I was lost and devastated all at once. As I listened to the conversation unfolding, I realized that my life would never be the same again. The innocence and happiness that once filled our home would now be replaced with heartache and despair. No, Bob and I have a good sex life, and he's always satisfied me in that way. I love him and would never intentionally have started anything with Stan. It kind of just happened. Come on Laura, you cheated on Bob. You can't be that satisfied with your marriage. No, you don't understand. My love for Bob is everything. He's not just my man, he's my home, my rest, my heart, and my safe place. And, yes, he satisfies me. I love him dearly. This stupid thing with Stan was just a big mistake. But you said Stan was a great lover, so we assume you had sex with him. We don't get it. Tell us the whole story. Girls, anything I tell you has to stay here. The guys would kill Stan, and my husband would kick me to the curb if he found out I would never hurt him that way. He's such a sweet man, but you would never understand. 
Do you promise to keep this just between us girls? I didn't hear anything, but I assumed they all nodded their heads in agreement. Okay, you can't repeat any of this, but after Susan dumped Stan last month, he was distraught. He was completely shocked. He was about to ask her to marry him. That afternoon when I saw him at the restaurant, we sat together, and he opened up to me and told me the entire story. Girls, he cried. This big strong stud was crying, and my heart went out to him. I felt so bad for him, so I sat with him until he calmed down. He was so depressed and upset I felt almost a motherly need to take care of him. Yes, you're old enough to be his mother. Give us a break Lore. You had a sexual need to take care of him, not a motherly need. Well, as it turned out, you're right, but at the time sex had not crossed my mind. Anyway, he walked me to my car and thanked me for being a good friend and letting him unburden his feelings. I just smiled and gave him a friendly kiss. That's when the spark started. Before I could move away from him, he pulled me close and gave me the sexiest kiss I can remember. It's been years since Bob kissed me like that, and that kiss turned my knees to jello. Hearing her say that caused me great pain and a heavy pounding in my chest. I shook, but I'm not sure if it was from anger or fear of what she would say next. After we broke the kiss, and without saying a word, he took my hand and led me to his truck, which was parked several rows over under a shaded tree. Don't ask me why I let him do this, it felt like I was spellbound. Anyway, we sat in the back of his truck and made out like high school sweethearts for the next few minutes, and that's when he told me he always found me so sexy and fantasized about being with me. I have to admit that I was overwhelmed and flushed from his compliments, but I can't explain what I did next. When he placed my hand on his crotch, I felt his massive cock. Huge. I mean it was a raging hard-on, visible under his jeans. I have to admit, I didn't think about Bob or family at all then. As if in a trance, I unbuckled his belt and lowered his pants to reveal his cock and wow. It was big. Bob is a good size, and I have no complaints, but this was porn star big. I can't explain it, but I just felt the surge to taste it. I ended up giving him one of my best blowjobs for the next 5 minutes until he exploded in my mouth. He was so thankful and said he needed that after what he had been going through. Did you swallow or spit? Mary asked as they all giggled. Oh, I swallowed every last drop, and he tasted great. I know what I said in the past about never swallowing Bob's coom, and how I hated it, but I can't explain why I needed to swallow Stan's coom, but I did, and I loved it. Hearing that was like a hot slicing my heart in two. I can't express the level of pain those words made as they penetrated every cell in my body. I felt myself shiver and shake as a feeling of loss overcame me. Roger's wife, Mary, spoke next, wow. That's hot. We never realized you had that in you. Me neither. I never thought about doing anything like that before, but it just kind of happened. That's when Scott's wife, Emily, chimed in, I think all of us girls dream of doing that, but it never happens. Good for you. I'm so jealous. Tell us what happened next. I could tell from Laura's voice that she knew what she did was wrong, and was feeling a profound sense of regret for crossing the line she never should have crossed. Well, after I came to my senses and I realized what I had done, I suddenly felt overcome with guilt. I knew what I did was wrong and that Bob would never understand, so I had to make sure it never happened again. I told Stan this was a one-time thing, and we could never do anything like that again. Then I told him that Bob was his friend, and he would feel betrayed by both of us if he found out. Stan agreed. He said it was just a moment of passion and would remain our secret forever. As I stood there, my heart torn between shock and pain, Laura's confessions still echoing in my mind, Mary's words delivered the final blow to any glimmer of hope I had left. That shattered the last remnants of my illusions, leaving me feeling utterly lost and devastated. Well then, how did you end up in bed with Stan and turn your husband into a cuckold? Hearing that question turned me into a broken man, humiliated and lost. I wanted to strangle both Stan and my cheating wife with my bare hands. Laura hesitated her answer before she revealed how Stan had reached out to her, seeking solace in his time of despair. The momentary ecstasy had been overshadowed by the realization of the betrayal and the depth of the hurt she had caused. When she spoke, it sounded like her words were tinged with sadness, as she revealed the intimate details she shared with Stan. In a somber voice she spoke, no, please don't think that. Bob's not a cuck, he'd never allow that to happen. I just made another stupid mistake. I really fucked up and should have known better. Stan called me to ask me to lunch, but I said no and told him that we really shouldn't be seen together. 
He said he was depressed and needed someone to talk to, and he felt as if I was the only one that understood what he was going through. Stan told me he'd make us lunch if I came over to his house for just an hour. That was when I made another colossal mistake by going to his house alone. We sat and talked as we ate the salads, along with another glass of wine. After an hour of small talk, he told me how moved he was by our last time together. He was standing next to me as he was about to take our dishes to the sink and kiss me again. This time it was one of those romantic panty dropping kisses we girls dream about. Long story short, we ended up in his bed for the entire afternoon. It wasn't romantic by any means, just raw sex. I knew it was wrong, but it just happened. And to be honest, it was the best sex I've had in years. Girls, I'd never felt anything so big and deep inside me before. It had been a while since he had sex, and he was a wild man. The first time Stan came inside me, his coom overflowed my pussy. I mean, he must have shot a gallon inside me, and I came so hard and screamed so loud, I was sure the neighbors heard us. It was an amazing few hours of hot sex, but we both knew it wasn't going to happen again. After I showered and dressed, I did tell him that this would never happen again and not to call me. I told him he was a wonderful man and needed to find a woman his own age to love, and that as much as I loved his cock, I wouldn't jeopardize my marriage. We both agreed, and that was the last time. So, you've never been with him again. Only those two times. As anger coursed through my veins, I clenched my fists tightly, trying to hold back the tumult of emotions swirling inside me. The revelation of Laura's one-time encounter with Stan felt like a stab to the heart, and the raw pain intensified with every word she uttered. Now knowing that she allowed another man to coom inside her was another blow to my male ego and self-worth. My world was imploding and my life as I knew it was over. The term cock echoed in my mind, a hurtful label that I never thought would be associated with my marriage. The rage surged, but I also felt a desperate desire to salvage what was left of our relationship. I didn't want to lose her, but I couldn't bear the weight of the betrayal either. My mind raced, grappling with conflicting emotions. The hurt and anger mixed with a sense of powerlessness, leaving me feeling lost and vulnerable. How could she do this? How could she betray our trust in such a way? Just as I was searching for a glimmer of hope, Laura's next comment hit me like a ton of bricks. It was as if she had poured salt into an already open wound. Her words tore at my heart, intensifying my anger and disbelief. I know it was wrong, but, like I said, it just happened. At that moment, the anger reached its peak. How could she dare to brush off her actions as if they were some uncontrollable impulses? The anger surged anew as I heard my wife trivializing her infidelities. I felt a sense of indignation, a feeling of betrayal that went beyond the physical act. She had willingly put our marriage at risk for a moment of pleasure. The room seemed to close in on me as the anger swelled, and I struggled to find a way to process it all. I wanted to scream, to lash out, but I knew that wouldn't solve anything. The pain was overwhelming, and I felt a crushing weight on my chest. At that moment, I realized that I couldn't make sense of it all right away. Then hearing her speak again I listened closely for any hope for our future together. As she spoke, her voice quivered with emotion. Laura acknowledged that despite the guilt she carried, she couldn't help but reminisce about the intense passion she shared with Stan. She described how those memories had become a secret sanctuary she sought when making love to me. No. Never again. All I have now are those wonderful memories. I hate to admit it, but I use them when Bob's making love to me. I know it's wrong, but I can't stop thinking of Stan's big cock and how it felt inside me. I can't get him out of my head. I've never experienced the deep orgasms he gave me before or since then. Now those memories are all I'll have. Bob will never know that it's not his cock that makes me coom while he's making love to me. Girls, Stan has ruined my pussy, and even with all the guilt I carry, I still can't get him out of my head. It was a bittersweet confession. Laura's words carried a sense of longing, as she grappled with the realization that those memories with Stan would forever remain a part of her, no matter how much she wished she could erase them. Emily had been quiet but spoke up after Laura's admission. Laura, I'm so jealous. I love Scott as well, but I'd love to give a big cock like Stan's a go. Don't repeat this, but Scott's kind of small. I love him dearly, but I'd kill to try out a big cock just once. I heard Mary make a low moan as if the story was getting her hot. That's wild. And poor Bob is clueless. He has no idea about Stan or that you fantasize about him during sex. God, that's so wicked, Lore. But you better fix your head and forget about Stan. Bob's not a stupid man, and you might slip up and hurt him. Don't worry about Bob. 
I make sure he's taken care of. And trust me, he'll never know about this, and I'll never do it again, I swear. It was a mistake, and living with this guilt has been difficult. To be honest, along with the wine, finally telling someone the entire story is helping me. My future was now in peril as the girls giggled and enjoyed their girl talk at my expense. I was a sucker that purchased the big house, paid the bills, and allowed my wife to enjoy a luxurious life without having to work. Spa, country club, shopping, new big house, with her pool for entertainment, and a housekeeper, all on my dime. The sucker, better known as the clueless husband. I couldn't believe what I had just heard. The shock of Laura's confession had left me in a state of disbelief, and tears streamed down my face, betraying the depth of my pain. Time seemed to pass in a blur as I listened to the conversation, and I was unable to tear myself away from the painful truth. I knew I had to leave, to distance myself from the situation, at least for now. With a heavy heart, I picked up my fishing lure, along with a bottle of Amontillado sherry I bought for the guys, then made my way back to Roger's house. The guys were waiting for my return, oblivious to the turmoil raging inside me. Tears continued to flow as I drove, my mind a whirlwind of confusion and hurt. I needed time to process everything, to come to terms with the betrayal I had just discovered. I wasn't ready to face Laura, to confront her about what I had learned. The pain was too raw, too overwhelming. I wanted to stick with the original plan, going away for the weekend and seeking solace in a place where I could be alone with my thoughts. But fate seemed to have a cruel sense of humor as I realized I would be spending those days with Stan, the very person who had been involved in the heartbreaking affair. The prospect of being around him only added to my anguish. I didn't know what to expect, and the uncertainty weighed heavily on my mind. Would I be able to keep my emotions in check? Could I face him without strangling him or revealing the devastation I felt inside? As I drove back to Roger's house, the tears continued to fall, and I felt a profound sense of loss and pain. The weekend ahead loomed like a dark cloud, and I was unsure of how I would navigate through it. All I knew was that I needed time to heal, to find a way to come to terms with the shattered pieces of my heart. At that moment, I felt utterly alone, feeling the betrayal of someone I loved and trusted. The sadness in my heart was overwhelming, and I prayed that somehow, someday, I would find a way to mend the broken pieces of my soul. When I arrived, Roger was outside loading up his Escalade. As I approached, he could tell there was something wrong, and that my eyes were glassy. I knew I was not ready to say anything, but when he asked what was wrong, I came up with a good answer. Bob, what's wrong? You look like shit. What's going on? Sorry Roger, I have a migraine coming on, and I just need to shut down for a while. Are you sure? Man, you look bad. Yeah, I'm used to dealing with this. Just let me sit in the front for the ride and I'll shut my eyes and I'm sure I'll be fine. Besides, there's no way I'll miss our annual trip, I need to get away. Of course, no problem. Why don't you go inside and relax and we'll finish packing. We'll leave in about 30 minutes. I'll come to get you when we're ready. Sure enough, 30 minutes later I was in the front seat, and my buddy Roger took care of me. He took his wife's sleeping eye cover, and a pair of his noise-canceling headphones, and handed them to me as I sat in the passenger seat, as Stan and Scott sat in the back. Along with the blindfold, the headphones put me in a dark place. My sensory perception was now limited to smell, touch, and taste, which allowed me to contemplate this unexpected situation. The guys understood my quietness and offered to help if I needed anything. I couldn't look at Stan, just kept my eyes shut and thanked them for their understanding. For the next three hours, still in that dark place, I was able to sit in peace and contemplate the train wreck I had just witnessed. I thought back to all of our years together, how I worshipped Laura, and felt blessed when she gave me Michael and Katie, our wonderful children. The mental images of Laura sucking Stan's cock and taking him inside her were all I could think about. The more I tried to stop, the more I saw her spread legs taking Stan's big cock. She said it was only one time and she felt guilty and would never do it again. I wanted to find a way to forgive her and get past that, but, the killer for me was remembering those final words on how she thinks of Stan, while I make love to her, and dreams of her orgasms with him when she has hers. As a red-blooded man, I can't imagine any guy getting past that. No. Sadly, I believe that confession ended our marriage. I thought about all the good times we spent together as a family, and how that might be over. Tears started and I wiped them away before they became visible. For the first time I can remember, I was struggling and lost. 
I had no answers or ideas on what to do and must have fallen asleep, because the last thing I remember is Roger shaking my shoulder, waking me up. Dude, are you okay? How are you feeling? He said, now at the fishing cabin. For the next two days, I was unusually quiet and used my migraine as an excuse. The guys left me alone as I tried not to ruin the trip for Scott and Roger. I continued to struggle with my feelings as I looked at my life, both past and future. It was difficult but I knew I would survive. Two days later, still in doubt, I found myself on a trail to the lake alone with Stan. Roger and Scott were going to meet us down at the boat dock. I found myself following Stan through the woods. As I followed him along the path, I heard Laura's words echo in my head, and suddenly I was full of rage. I noticed a large fallen branch, the size of a large baseball bat on the side of the path. Without thinking, I picked it up and felt the heavy weight of the branch in my hands, let it stand about 20 paces in front of me, and suddenly charged forward, raising the heavy branch and bringing it down hard onto Stan's right shoulder. I was going for his head, but at the last second changed direction and shattered his collarbone, causing Stan a searing pain as he fell to the ground. Standing over at him, I was looking down at the man that fucked my wife. He was holding his shoulder as I yelled, that's for fucking my wife. I then kicked him as hard as I could between his legs. I hit his balls as hard as I could, and watched him curl up wailing in pain until he blacked out. A few moments later I came back to my senses and moved Stan over to a tree and sat him up while he recovered. A few minutes later he regained consciousness. What the fuck? Look asshole, I know all about you and Laura, and right now you're lucky you're still alive. Man, I'm sorry it just happened. Bob's face turned red with rage, shut the fuck up. You fucked her, end of the story. Don't even talk to me for the rest of the trip, and you don't say one word to Laura about this. If you do, I swear you will live to regret it. I'm not sure what I plan to do with her, but I don't need you fucking that up as well. You've destroyed my 20 year marriage, don't fuck up my revenge as well. Bob, she loves you. You can't divorce her. This is all my fault and I'm sorry, please just take it out on me, not her. Bob, I was hurting from Susan leaving me and Laura was there for me. It just happened and she felt guilty after I pushed her. Man, you can't divorce her, she loves you. I kicked him in the balls again. I said shut up. Just then Roger and Scott saw me kicking him again and ran over and pulled me away. Bob, what are you doing? What's going on? Stan was quiet and held his balls in pain. Roger helped Stan get up, and we went back to the cabin for the next hour. Stan was holding his shoulder acting all pissed off because I attacked him from behind, and how it wasn't a fair fight. I glared at him and told him to shut up, and then played the recording for everyone to hear. When the recording ended Roger screamed at his nephew, you fucking asshole. You betrayed our friend and the man that gave you a job when you were down and out and took you into his trust. You fucked one of our wives, and had the nerve to come with us on this trip. And, you pissed off that Bob hurt you. You should be thankful that we didn't dump your ass in the middle of the lake. We don't want to see or hear from you for the rest of this trip, not one word. And you should be thankful you're still alive, Roger said. Scott spoke up, you know guys, there's another problem with this recording. You heard what my wife and Mary said and how exciting it was. All of our wives were excited about Laura's cheating and keeping it a secret. I don't know about you, but I have a problem with that, and when I get back Emily and I will be having a serious conversation. Yeah, you're right Scott. That was bullshit and disrespectful to all of us. He turned to Stan, giving him a death stare, and said, see what you've done asshole. You've destroyed one marriage and possibly two others. Maybe we should dump you in the middle of the lake. Stan just looked down at the floor and remained silent. He finally realized how badly he screwed up. Bob spoke, guys, I agree they are all involved, but please give me a few days before you do anything. I'll give you a copy of the recording, but I need to confront Laura before she knows what I've learned. Thanks to this asshole, I don't think I can stay with her. Hell, every time we make love now, I'll know she's thinking about his big dick. There's no way I can be with her knowing that. I'm probably going to divorce her. I know I can't be with her. I just need a few days to figure things out. Roger looked over at his nephew Stan, you're a piece of shit. You will not speak to Laura or the other wives without our approval. If you warn Laura what's about to come down on her, we will make your life a living hell. Right now, if you disappeared none of us would be upset. You're my nephew and family, which is the only reason I haven't beaten your ass and left you in those woods. You've hurt our friend and a good man. Just because you couldn't keep your girlfriend you go after another man's wife. You're a piece of shit, and I'm embarrassed to admit you're my sister's kid. 
Not a word, do you understand, asshole? Stan nodded and understood. Nobody spoke to him again for the entire trip and to his credit, he stayed out of the way and avoided any conflict. I just had to figure out what I was going to do with Lore. As we drove back home, I considered everything and wondered how Laura would have reacted if the roles were reversed. That was it. Suddenly, I had a plan. Deep down I loved Laura, and probably could get over the one-off fuck and suck with Stan, but the thought of her dreaming of him while making love with me was too much. I decided to leave Laura's fate in her own hands. The plan was to talk about an affair, leading her to think it was me who had the affair, and see how she reacts and what she would do. If she forgave the one-off sex, then I would do the same for her and work things out. However she reacts, in exactly the way I will treat her and our marriage. The solution to her infidelity will be in her own hands. My stomach was turning upside down, and my anger resurfaced as I returned home and pulled into my driveway. I was in a dark place, but it was time to face Laura, and I needed to keep my feelings in check and act normal, which was going to be one of the hardest things I've ever done. I got a warm welcome home when I entered the house. Laura was dressed up and looking nice when she gave me a big hug and an excellent welcome home kiss, which I was going to miss if she chose that path. I was still pissed, but I still loved the cheating slut. My blood was boiling as I thought about what she had done, but the smells of her perfume and the nice dinner she prepared helped calm me down. We had an excellent dinner and somehow, I remained pleasant and listened to her tell me about the last few days. It was still relatively early when she took me up to the bedroom saying she missed me and needed some extra loving. Obviously, she was horny and wanted some sex. I smiled to myself knowing she was about to determine our future. Laura didn't waste time and had my pants down around my ankles a minute after we were on the bed. She was on her knees and started licking my shaft until it was hard, and then gave me a world-class, sloppy wet blowjob that got me rock hard. I tried to coom during the blowjob because I didn't want to be inside her, as I knew she would be thinking of Stan. I knew that this was something I would envision every time we made love. She knew I was getting close, and stopped her ministrations on my cock. In a second, she was naked on the bed pulling me on top of her. I wanted to fuck her in the worst way, but all I could hear were her words about dreaming of Stan's cock, while I made love to her, and for the first time in our relationship my cock softened and was unable to penetrate her pussy. Laura looked up at me in shock. I could tell she felt hurt by my lack of excitement. Baby, what's wrong? You don't want to fuck me. It was showtime. I had my phone on the night table recording the audio so that there would not be any misunderstanding of my conversation. Laura, there's something I need to tell you. There's someone else, and I feel so bad that my cock just can't perform. Shocked, she looked up at me and asked, what do you mean, there's someone else? I'm so sorry. It's only been a couple of times, but the sex is so great I just can't get it out of my head. Her Latin temper flared, as I predicted, you fucking bastard. You fuck someone else and you can't stop thinking of the sex. Baby, it was only sex, I still love you, I said, careful not to say it was me having the affair. I can't believe this. What do you mean you can't stop thinking about it? Well, to be honest, the orgasms were the best ever, and I can't get the thought of all those amazing orgasms out of my head, which is why I can't get hard. I phrased the words carefully, not implicating myself, but just repeating her own words from the recording. She was crying, obviously hurt by the thought of the betrayal. Was I being cruel and mean? Maybe, but in reality, I was the victim, not her. I let her continue. Guys, I'm very sorry to stop this story right here. I have some personal stuff to do with my things. Not very good things are happening in my life. Part 2 will be tomorrow, I promise you. For now, leave the comment if this story is good enough, just for me to understand the quality of the content. Love you all, see you tomorrow.